Not for the first time I chuckled when I saw again that OnePlus slogan, never settle. The cheap shot in me would then like to point out they did indeed settle by aping Apple by removing the useful 3.5mm audio jack. They arguably settled by switching from capacitive fingerprint scanning with power on capability to an in-screen optical arrangement which is slower and which requires a press of the power key first to light up the sensor. But as I say, these are cheap shots by me. They're true, but they don't tell the whole story since the newish Nord is indeed a slick and slim smartphone. It essentially brings Oxygen OS on top of Android with super display, super albeit mono speaker, fast operation to users well under £400 in the UK, putting it right up against the newer Google Pixel 4a and Apple iPhone SE 2020 in a three-way playoff in which all three options are very good phones for almost everyone. I guess that will be the ideal three-way comparison. I'm sure others have already done it though. I had to give my SE 2020 back, in fact, and 4A hasn't even arrived yet in the UK. So I did notice it's almost identical in form, factor, weight and feel to my classic Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, and by extension, the 10 Plus and 20 Plus to a certain extent, begging a direct comparison in terms of my personal experience. These two things are just sister devices almost in terms of form, factor, feel in my hand, even with TPU cases here, which you'll need. This review arrives two months after first availability of the Nord, but after a number of important system updates, I think this device is arguably done now, and a comparison feature is going to be a lot more fun than a straight-up new but late phone review from me. Can this mid-price OnePlus newcomer sway me from one of my favourite Android devices of all time and still the most feature-rich device on the planet, arguably? along with its sister device, the Note 9. Now, I recently went over my eight must-haves for my personal smartphone on the PSC podcast. Here's the URL. In case you missed it, these were a great AMOLED screen, loud stereo speakers, you know I love those, a great camera, preferably with telephoto for better portrait shots, Qi wireless charging, a 3.5mm audio jack, hey, it's me, up-to-date security patches, reliable biometrics, and full waterproofing. And somewhat obviously, the OnePlus Nord misses over half of these, despite being two years newer, as indeed do a huge number of 2020 devices. The Sony Xperia 1 Mark II being the only one to match everything. Does that make the OnePlus Nord a worse smartphone? Well, perhaps for me personally, but I do think I need to broaden the comparison criteria out just a little bit. It's not all about me, you know. The S9 Plus here and the Note 9 represent the last point in Samsung's timeline before it jumped into ultrasonic fingerprint sensors, missing audio jacks, and so on. And you can now get the S9 Plus new for less than the Nord's £380 launch price, or a lot less secondhand. We look at these all day long, of course. The S9 Plus's QHD screen outguns the newer Nord's 1080p, but with my eyes, I really can't tell the difference, and I end up running the S9 Plus at 1080p anyway to save battery. Plus the Nord screen runs it up to 90 hertz, as you can see here. Well, obviously you can't, as your YouTube frame rate is much lower. Can I tell the difference? Just, but younger eyes may count this as a significant advantage over absolute resolution. So let's call this one a draw. I'm not counting the double selfie cutout on the Nord top left since it's hidden a lot of the time in the status bar, at least with a dark theme in play on the phone. Rather amazingly, my 2.5 year old Exynos 9810 powered Galaxy S9 Plus outperforms the Snapdragon 765G in the OnePlus Nord in terms of benchmarks. Geekbench has it around 5% faster in all regards, though I've said many times that benchmarks aren't always representative of the real world experience and I can't tell any meaningful difference between the two in daily use. Data speeds are identical across the board, apart from the 5G radio in the Nord, which the S9 Plus obviously doesn't have. And this compensates for the 5% slower chipset in my evaluation. So another draw, I feel. To all. Music, local on the phone or via Spotify or similar. YouTube watching, Netflix over headphones or speakers. We all love our phones for media and the older Galaxy S9 Plus romps away with this one, I think. A super DAC driving a 3.5mm audio jack for wired listening. Stereo speakers, well, they're not quite balanced since the earpiece speaker is weedier, but still stereo. Dolby Atmos support plus AI-driven video picture enhancement. The Samsung has the lot. It's a media monster, and it always was. The OnePlus Nord is from the modern age with no jack, sadly, so you have to source your own USB Type-C dongle for wired audio. Or go Bluetooth. 
increasingly a good wireless option. The mono speaker is surprisingly good. Here's a demo. The classic rock show doing a Who cover, of course. Full volume. And the one person award. Love that cover. It's one of the newer speaker components filled with the little foam balls, and as a result, it can get louder and with better bass. But mono is mono. And the bottom firing speaker means it's all off to one side when you're watching. Now, stereo spans the phone screen when viewing media and is so much more satisfying and immersive. I have to give the win to the Galaxy S9 Plus 3 2, a small lead. Now, this is tough to call in that the older S9 Plus is an extra two times telephoto, while the newer Nord has the more fashionable ultra-wide angle lens, and which you prefer is very much a personal call. But the raw specs of the old S9 Plus's camera still dominate the Nords with the, uh, the dual aperture up to f over 1.5, that's huge, and dual pixel autofocus. And yet, in test photo after test photo with the main camera, the OnePlus Nord kept up with the Galaxy S9 Plus and often produced something ostensibly brighter and cleaner. Clearly phone camera real-time processing has improved in the intervening years and OnePlus is doing some very clever multi-frame capture in low light and in daylight automatically as on the iPhone without you explicitly calling up any kind of nightscape mode. Now if I'm being picky and I am the Samsung shots have slightly higher image quality at the pixel level especially in very low light and of course neither phone gets close to the iPhone 11 Pro or Pixel 3, Pixel 4 and so on, but they're both eminently good enough for all real world use cases. The Galaxy S9 Plus has a telephoto based portrait mode, which is excellent. The Nord has a dedicated depth camera, even better, though you do have to get a bit physically closer to your subject to get the same framing. But it all evens out to my surprise, another draw. 4.3 to the older phone though at the moment. Now this is where the newer Nord gets its own back. The S9 Plus's 3500mAh battery was only just about enough in the first year of ownership and since then the battery has got older and less capable. Android has got heavier with the result that the S9 Plus can't get me through a heavy day anymore. It's on battery saver mode by tea time every day. By contrast the brand new 4115mAh still in the Nord with a modest 7 nanometer process, that's, uh, that's more power efficient, 700 series Snapdragon chip to power, easily gets it through a heavy day, even with two gig more RAM to power. I have the eight gigabyte RAM, 128 gigabyte storage variant here. The only one seemingly available in the UK. Yes, the Galaxy S9 has Qi charging and I love it to bits, but the Nord has 30 watt fast charging. And I think that kind of compensates to keep the battery issue a win for the newer phone overall. For all then, getting exciting. Now, both phones are Gorilla Glass 5 sandwiches with the S9 Plus on a metal frame and the OnePlus Nord on plastic, but the latter absorbs impact better, so I can't really declare a winner on this aspect alone. Waterproofing should be a clincher. The Galaxy S9 Plus is IP68 certified, can be dunked a metre down for half an hour without issue, but although the Nord has no official rating, the SIM tray, the USB port and speaker ports all have internal water seals. And it's evident that the OnePlus phone is essentially waterproof. The company just economised by not putting it through the expensive certification process. Both phones are way, way better in TPU cases, of course, as shown earlier in the show. I'm going to put them back on now. The Nord even comes with this really nice matte finished TPU affair from OnePlus. So credit for that. And another draw, I'm afraid. Sorry, now tied at five all. Now here's where things get personal again. Oxygen OS on the OnePlus Nord is essentially stock Android 10 plus a number of nice bells and whistles. In fact, it's rather splendid and much loved by many after over five years of maturation. The only bloat I could find was Facebook, which can be removed, plus annoyingly three non-installable Facebook system services, though they can at least be permanently disabled. And in fairness, and as discussed on PSC recently, many Android phones seem to have these non-uninstallable Facebook system services under the hood, including my S9 Plus. While well, Samsung's skin, now called One UI 2.1, also on Android 10, even on the older S9 Plus, has similarly evolved for over a decade. It's optimised for one-handed use in many applications, and that's good to see. But there are lots of Samsung-esque and over-comical apps and UI elements to tame when you first set up such a phone. Plus, quite a few applications you didn't necessarily want, not all of which can be uninstalled. 
On the other hand, there are some seriously useful extras like the uh, edge panels and edge lighting. It's the kitchen sink approach compared to the OnePlus Nord's just the essentials approach. And both are absolutely fine. There are so many pros and cons here that we could go backwards and forwards all day. Yes, another draw, it's now six all. As you might expect, idiosyncrasies for each make an extras category obligatory. For example, the Galaxy S9 Plus has a couple of useful biosensors for heart rate and oxygen saturation measuring. I use these often and they're pretty accurate. While the Nord has an even more useful do not disturb switch, letting you toggle between ringing notifications, vibrate only and full DND. Such a good idea and traditional on OnePlus hardware. Phew, we're going to need a tiebreaker here. I've got it. The S9 Plus has an always on display showing date, time, notifications and so on. One glance, you're up to date. But this is confirmed as also coming to the Nord in a software update in the near future, a couple of months maximum. So I give up. Seven apiece. I can't break the deadlock. I'm not saying the Nord is as good a fit for me personally as my beloved S9 Plus, but it has surprised me in holding its own overall. Take away hard wiring audio, take away my love for media consumption on a smartphone, and the Nord would even edge ahead, as indeed a 2020 smartphone mid-ranger should, perhaps over a flagship from 2018. That's how fast the phone world moves. Yes, I'd absolutely love to have had Qi charging, storage expansion, an audio jack, but regardless, it's still super value for £379, all in here in the UK. For anyone with £400 to spend, it's going to be a tough call, deciding between this, uh, the iPhone SE 2020, and the even newer Google Pixel 4a, which is finally appearing in some countries three months after I picked it in a top five. This is smooth, it's solid, it's great value. This is the OnePlus Nord.